On April 5, 1943, in the Atlantic Ocean, about 10 miles off the coast of Brazil, a fishing family spotted a Chinese man on a much smaller wooden raft, bobbing up and down and waving his shirt. This man was clearly in distress, so the Brazilian family turned around and picked him up. As he climbed in the boat, he was overjoyed, hungry and very grateful. The man danced and ate whatever was given to him as they set sail again. In three days, they reached Belém, a town on the Amazon River in Brazil. Authorities were waiting for him as the man, unassisted, walked off the boat. In light of his situation, this was an impressive achievement. As it turns out, Poon Lim was stranded at sea for 133 days, a record for a lone human. Poon Lim was born on March 8, 1918, in Hainan, China, an island in the South China Sea. Unlike many other kids his age, he attended school thanks to his brothers sending money from their factory jobs. At 16, Lim's father, believing that life would be better elsewhere, and out of the fear that Lim would be drafted in the war against the rapidly advancing Japanese, sent him to join one of his brothers on a British passenger freight, working as a cabin boy. In the beginning, he didn't like the life at sea, getting sick and teased constantly. He eventually caught on the ways of the ship, but conditions were terrible for Chinese crew members in general. They were discriminated, shoved into overwhelming crowds living spaces, and given the worst jobs. This was not the better life his father envisioned for Poon. His brother tried to make him feel better by saying that at least the British soldiers aren't beating them, but Poon wasn't satisfied with their situation. As the years passed, the conditions got better for Chinese crewmen on British ships, mostly because, due to World War II, the supply of British crewmen had decreased. In order to keep up with the intense demand the war had created, merchant ships had to entice workers by improving conditions and increasing pay for Chinese crewmen. Lim had actually quit as a cabin boy in about 1938 and moved to Hong Kong to enroll in the mechanics school. The sea came calling again after six months. His cousin told him of the improved conditions and, most importantly, better pay. Also, the Japanese were about to capture Hong Kong any day and Lin did not want to be around when that happened. Thus, he signed on working under his cousin as a second steward on the SS Belmont. In November 1942, the SS Belmont began its journey in Cape Town and was crossing the Atlantic Ocean on its way to Suriname, a Dutch-owned plantation colony in South America before sailing to New York. The Belmont was known as a tram steamer. It did not have a fixed schedule, nor published ports of call. Unlike other trade ships that went in convoys, tram steamers often traveled solo. The Belmont was armed, but its heavy slow movements made it an easy target. On November 23rd, around 11 am, more than two-thirds into the voyage, the ship was captured by a Nazi U-boat. The ship sank within two minutes. Poon Lim was the only survivor out of 55. Fortune and fate had very different plans in store for him. Lim was still able to grab a life jacket, which likely saved his life, and dive into the water. He then swam as fast as he could away from the sinking ship. He was actually spotted in the water by the Nazi U-boat, but was ignored, left to suffer in the cold, dark waters. He swam for around two hours before coming across and boarding on an 8x8 foot wooden raft with a partial canvas roof. Luckily for him, it had provisions on it. This was essentially the only good luck he had for the next four months at sea. He initially thought he was going to get rescued quickly, so he only partioned the food out for 30 days. He eventually realized that no one was going to come looking for the ship under such dangerous wartime conditions. He decided that he would take matters into his own hands and thought maybe if you can survive long enough, the raft would take the current and float to land by itself. In order to survive, he improvised a rain-catching container out of the canvas from the roof and his life jacket. He made a fishing hook out of the wire from the flashlight and jagged edges of the tins of biscuit for bait. Beyond fishing, he decided that he needed to find a way to catch something else, such as seagulls. To do this, he took the seaweed from the bottom of the raft, matted it down and shaped it until it looked like a nest. Then he laid the fish rod next to the nest. Soon enough, a seagull whooped in and Lim was able to catch it. He then sucked the blood out of the bird 
and dried out the remaining flesh with salt water, making seagull jerk. In case he fell in, he knotted one of the rope to his wrist and the other to the raft. By day 60, he began to swim twice a day in order to keep his physical strength up. Unfortunately, the second month, a storm nearly destroyed his raft and he lost his water and food supply. But at least he was able to repair the raft and continued his journey. Beyond storms and the constant difficulty of catching food and drinkable water, sharks were also a problem. They were attracted by the remaining blood of the fish he caught. The sharks would often surround his boat and sometimes they rammed the raft. He crafted a sharp hook out of a nail he managed to remove from the raft and when another shark came close, he managed to hook and pull it up into the boat. After a fight, Lim killed the shark which gave him food for days. He came close to rescue three times but with no luck. Once he was spotted by a crew of a passing freighter, he even asked them for help in English but was ultimately left by himself. He thought it's because he was Chinese, but most likely it was because they thought he was a Japanese sailor. It was well known that crews of U-boats often place fake survivors in the water to bait saviors into their torpedoes. As a result, many ships were forbidden from attempting saves. In a second instance, he was spotted by American airmen out on patrol, but ultimately no rescue resulted. This might have been because shortly after, there was a storm which moved Lim's raft far from where he was spotted. In another instance, a German submarine spotted him and surfaced, but in the end decided to leave him to his fate. His journey came to an end when he was found by a Brazilian fisherman on April 5, 1943. Three days later, they landed in Belém, a town at the mouth of the Amazon River. Upon arriving in Belém, despite being relatively healthy, he spent four weeks at the local hospital. When he was released, the British Council arranged for him to go to Britain, where he was given a British Empire Medal by King George VI. The Royal Navy was so impressed by his story that they incorporated his techniques into their manuals. When the war ended, he decided to emigrate to the US and, despite initial difficulty, he was eventually allowed into the United States thanks to special legislation written by Democratic Senator Walter Magnuson of Washington. Poon Lim passed away on the 4th of March 1991 at the age of 72. To this day, he still holds the official record for the longest time for a person to survive being rafted at sea. When asked in 1943, Poon Lim responded, I hope no one will ever have to break that record. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please consider giving it a like or sending it to a friend.